for most of us, life experiences follow a course that we call normal. But in the absolute sense, the individual life experience of each one of us is individual. No one thinks, feels, hopes, fears, or experiences the same things as anybody else. We are unique. I've reached the position in my life that includes grandparenting. And one of the most obvious aspects about my grandparenting that is unique is the name by which my grandchildren refer to me. In our English language, most grandmothers are called grandma or gran or nan or nanny or nana or perhaps even grandmother. My grandchildren call me Granada. My son and his family live in England and my grandchildren's grandma lives in England too. Granada is their grandma in Canada. <laughs> my two eldest grandchildren are Abigail and Laura. Just two years apart in age, they are great friends, and each one has her own beautiful attributes that a grandmother can delight in. My third grandchild is my only grandson, Nathaniel. When I was last with them, he was in the, age, the stage of terrible twos. Tonight, I would like to share with you some of the flavor of Granada's encounter with Nathaniel. I hope you can visualize this. Nathaniel was a child who, when he went to bed, had to be put in a harness in order to keep him quiet long enough to fall asleep. When I first heard of this, I thought it bordered on child abuse. But he didn't seem to mind, and if he didn't have the harness on, he would be down over the stairs no matter what the consequences. Once he fell asleep, the harness was removed. But the removal of the harness did nothing for the peace the next morning. Nathaniel was an early riser. Granada was an early riser, too. And it was this combination that re resulted in some interesting events. One morning, Granada, I, woke up to the sound of a little voice in the dining room below. So I put on my robe and went down over the stairs, and there was Nathaniel standing on a chair at the end of the table, just finishing off the last bits in a carton of chocolate ice cream. <laughs> the lemon sherbet was on the table just at the side, ready for when the chocolate ice cream was gone. <laughs> on another occasion, I was not aware that Nathaniel was up but I was ready for my breakfast, so I went up on downstairs. There in the middle of the living room, he stood, a big chunk of cheese in his little hand, the wrapper folded back, and teeth marks all the way down one side. I mean, this was a block of cheese. I guess a child gets hungry after a long night's sleep. One cannot help <coughs> but wonder sometimes whether two-year-olds understand English at all, or whether they hear what we say or even care what they hear. How many times must one say no or correct behavior before they understand? My question is rhetorical. Obviously, there is no answer. But guaranteed, they pick up on the things that are useful to them. I'd like to give you an example. For some reason, my grandson found the cat litter box most appealing. <laughs> he perhaps he saw it as a little sandbox. He certainly saw it as some place to play. In my son's <coughs> house, the cat litter box was kept in the half bath which adjoined the laundry area on the main floor. 
you may be assured that he was told many, many times to leave it alone and was chastised for disobeying. But one day, Grandmother saw Nathaniel go into the half bath and close the door. Now, at two years old, he was not using the bathroom alone. So I knew there was some other reason for his entry into this room. I went over and opened the door and there he was, just stooping down to root around in the litter. He stood quickly. He looked at me with a serious and indignant look and clearly stated, Granada, I closed the door. <laughs> two-year-olds pick up on what is useful to them. He had learned that when a person goes into a bathroom and closes the door, they are assured of being left alone. And apparently he saw this as an opportunity to get at the cat litter box undisturbed. Two-year-olds have no trouble understanding. It's just that often they just don't care. My fourth grandchild is Heidi. I don't know her at all. She was born on Christmas Day 2007 while I was with them and I came home in March 2008. I've heard stories about her and gotten glimpses on webcam, but her personality is really unknown to me. We all have our own individual experiences. General outlines often are similar, but it's the details that make our own personal stories and make us unique. My mind's gone blank. <laughs> <laughs> but it is the details that give life its value. And it's the details that create those wonderful memories that bring smiles to our faces and lightness <coughs> to our hearts. Thank you.